Hey beauties, uh, yeah, you're gonna watch me make up my face. Don't judge a girl. I'm coming with a new video and I was just getting ready with this fit. It's from Fashion Nova and it's a full jumpsuit, jeans, with a little detail on the top. And so yeah, so this look is the look I was doing to get ready with when I was discussing how I started a business, why I left nursing and all that stuff. So stay tuned, don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. Welcome to Sinead Vachey. I'm happy to see you, happy to know you're watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like my video, and share it with your friends. So stay tuned for the video, no more talking, Sinead, shut up, and let's get into it. Is offline so see there so um yeah as I was saying I started a business during COVID um, I currently craft um, I currently have and crafted satin bonnets oh my goodness I think these lashes are a little bit too heavy for my eyes shoot but um yeah whatever we'll work with it um, handcrafted satin bonnets. I had the fashion side of Vache. I'm focusing on a little bit of kid stuff currently. Um, yeah, so mainly head scarf, head tie, anchor prints, and a lot of satin protection for to keep the moisture in your hair and all that while you sleep and while you're trying to be cute, while you're trying to protect your face, your hair from your face while you're doing your makeup. My use of bonnet is various and you can style it how you want forget about what Monique said but her foolishness so yeah um, I so where do I begin with my business so I started with a business plan when I realized that I wanted to focus on satin products and hair care products for protection of the hair and I um, that was the hardest part of it actually the business plan was so hard and um, so I started with that and then I try to figure out my targeted audience by posting a few things. I started my website from scratch, zero. I didn't use the old, um, not my website, my Instagram from scratch. I didn't use the old Instagram because I did not feel like what I had on Instagram wanted to see my bonnet. So I started a new one just to focus on just my hair care products of satin protection and holding moisture and all that. So. I started out from with zero and then I realized I was getting followers from the few posts that I had of my bonnet. So I realized that quality and my age group was from around 18 to 50 the most. So I found all of this information from insights on there. I, I had to learn so much about Instagram with starting this business. Um, and then I eventually um, said I was going to get rid of, or, or not get rid of, I just said I was going to branch off from the five styles that I started with which was um, watermelon print and uh, that colorful print that I still have, Embrace, and a few other prints I started with, five. And I focused on that for about two to three months, got a lot of followings, got a lot of orders, um, started doing custom orders. People realized that um, they can message me and try to customize their stuff, whether their headband was more than 21 inches, which is what my regular bonnets are. They messaged me and said, oh, they have a bigger head or they have a smaller head. Can I put it to 19 or can I put it to 22 and a half? And I worked with that and I realized that I had something in this and I was enjoying the sewing machine and enjoying making bonnets. So I said, let me start with some head ties. Started with that and some few other things, satin scrunchies and all that stuff. And then the pillowcases and then... So I started with all that, try to focus on marketing, which is absolutely hard, try to post more, um, try to set up a schedule, but the whole schedule thing, that was hard too because I started using um, Plano, 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 I'll write it if I wrote it wrong, um, Plano only or something, and then I realized that I was being picked up as a bot because I kept making that post for me instead of just planning the, the post and then physically posting it myself at that moment when it pops up on my screen and say, hey, it's 12 o'clock, do your post. So I did that. 
And then also I realized I had to post more. So I took bathroom time as my post. So every time I needed to pee, Instagram needed to pee too. So that's how I did it. And I, I kind of branched off from doing that a little bit and then now I'm focusing back on it. And um, I got busy with life and I had a, little, a lot of added stuff to my life. Um, being at home with kids is not easy and then they're home with school, that wasn't easy either. So um, yeah, that's how I started. How did I start sourcing fabric? I got that question on Instagram, so I'm gonna address that. I started with sourcing fabric because it was COVID time online. So I would order from a few fabric store, fabric, fabric I think I ordered from. The duty was ridiculous, the US shipping was ridiculous. So then I didn't order too much. I just settled with what I had. When those were sold out, I didn't go back with that print. I also sourced China, which was also expensive on Alibaba. I sourced them and I got a few items from them as well. And um, so I stuck with a few items from them. And then I, when we opened up a little bit in Toronto, I found a, um, sorry, I'm going to come off screen a little bit. I found a, um, uh, uh, well, I knew they were there. It's just that they were closed during COVID. And then I kind of like try to reach out to the man, to like the owners and stuff. And I got through with that. And then we became friends. And there was that relationship that was built through that company that I found in Brampton, which a lot of people know about it. So I'll say the name is Jagji Texa. Um, so I get a lot of my fabric from there. Um, a lot. Most of my satin because their price is really good and their charm satin is amazingly soft. And I'm very big on charm satin because it's easy to wash. It's um, good quality. Um, I tried bridal satin. That didn't work out. So if you want to try, do the same business as me, girl, I will never knock your hustle. Go out there and try. There's enough money for all of us out there. Go for it. And if there's anything else that you want to do, not just bonnets and whatever, just don't make nobody tell you that you can't. Like, all those people that always have something to say, don't. Don't let them get to you. Don't. Don't you ever. I gotta cover, the first thing I do is cover up my spots, as you can see. So yeah, um, if you wanna do something, just go for it. Yeah. Don't let nobody stop you from doing it. Yeah. Nobody whatsoever. So um, yeah, so I sourced that with um, the store here in Brampton. Well, not here anymore. I'm living in Richmond Hill now. Um, and that worked out well for me. Um, I have, um, what's it called in my, I have primer in my eyelash, in my eyebrows, so I'm trying to get rid of that. Um, so yeah, I sourced with them and then I eventually focused more on just reversal of patterns. So I just used a lot of plain, but now I'm focusing back on using my rayons to, and my cotton. I hope I'm not rambling. I feel like I'm rambling all over the place. So, um, yeah, and that worked for me. That worked for me tremendously just doing that. And um, with this business thing and sourcing fabric, it's not easy. You got to really trust a lot of people, follow your gut, and just try to get samples. Samples is hella expensive, to tell you the truth. So if you can get locally, just do locally. I know it's 10 times easier in the States because they have, Joanne's fabric is amazing, but in Canada, we only have fabric line, and fabric line is not very good or reliable, and I didn't want to use that much. So, um, yeah, I definitely use China-based products, like from my, a lot of my Ankara prints, and I use some from Jazzy Textile, and, um, and then, uh, so that's the fabric side of it. I had to get elastic sewing machines. Right now, I have about four sewing machines, that I use because I don't want one to break and I kind of like having one with black, one with pink, one with red, you know, like one with purple, like so I can just jump around instead of wasting time to string machines. So I spent a lot of money on f machines too. But eventually when I started, I started with one machine and it was just a simple singer machine and that died on me from all those orders within three months. So that tells you how much I was running that machine, sleepless, a lot of sleepless nights at the beginning. And then I finally find a figure out a schedule where I work four to six hours a, a day, the most. And I try to knock at least 15 to 20 bonnets throughout the day and do cut a lot of my stuff for the next days and plan. So if I have six orders today, I'm gonna, and they're due in three to five days, I'm gonna knock down three of them. And then the other times, if I have extra time, I will cut for new items, I'll cut new patterns, I'll cut 
and stuff that I'm trying to do bulk of I'll cut so I don't have to just I like to do bulk lately because if I want to take a break that's the only way I can take a break is by having bulk items so six to seven of each items I have sewn already and ready it's just hard when I want to do customization and I hate turning on customization because clearly you want to customize because your head is not the regular size or yeah whatever that works but um yeah this whole entrepreneurship and business is Definitely was not easy, but I'm happy I did it. Um, a lot of people are scared. We're like, it's scared. Period. I know they are. Like, it's not something that you wake up the next morning and be like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that, and just jump on it the next day. It's not something like that. So, you gotta like sit down and plan and make sure you don't lose money. And if you don't have money, you start off slow. Like I didn't want to waste too much money in the beginning, so I started off with the five patterns. But um, yeah, this is no fun, but it's if it's in you, it's in you. Trust me. Trust me when I say that. You find yourself marketing yourself so much, and like people that don't know you are, the, are your biggest fans and telling you keep going. And so you're out there working for them, not just for yourself, not just for your family. You're trying to make somebody else happy because they're so proud of you. It's like your mother of Instagram, you know, or your sister of Instagram. So I enjoyed doing that, and um, but yeah, that's it. Right now I'm at, there's days when it's good, then there's days when it's bad, and then there's when it's overwhelming and I can't manage. So it's not, I just gotta suck it up, sleepless, enjoy those sleepless nights until I get where I wanna be in life. Right now I'm not exactly where I am because I started the YouTube. I have, I'm, I'm getting less sleep because I have so much going on right now. I'm like an Uber driver to my 13 year old, bringing him to 10 different practices all throughout the week. Um, yeah, it's I have a two year old that definitely drives anyone crazy. Six year old that I have to bring to tutor and I have to bring like it's just a mom schedule with a finite a mom schedule with a mom being an entrepreneur, pretty much. It's no fun and I still gotta be a wife at the end of the day. Like, you know what I mean? So I still gotta feed my husband, cook and give him what he wants. So it's a, it's a dream come true at the same time, but you really got to focus. You really got to just push yourself and don't listen to anybody but yourself. And any problem you have, bring it to God. Don't bring it to nobody else because I learned that the hard way. So now I just keep everything to me and God. And it's way better that way. Like, I'm so happy where I'm at right now. And I wouldn't change it for the world. I gave up my nursing career. Well, I didn't completely give it up. I just took a break from it because the schedule wouldn't work for my kids being home for COVID. I would have to pay so much for daycare for a two-year-old and a six-year-old. It just, it, it just wasn't worth it for me. So I figured a way of starting my own business and it took off. I can't even lie. Like, it worked. So it worked out. I am not 100% where I want to be. I'm almost there. I'm almost at middle line. I just want to focus a little bit more and have more products available than having everybody waiting. I'm working on being that Amazon girl with the bonnet. So if you order today, you get it tomorrow. You know what I mean? Or you get it shipped out tomorrow. So it's not easy doing what I do. And it's not easy for anyone to do what I do. You just got to believe in yourself. It's the biggest thing that I learned is don't follow what nobody else has to say. Do your damn thing. So yeah, I'm just getting fancy. But yeah, this was not okay. First of all, don't come for me for my makeup. From the way I do my makeup, this is me, and I've always done my makeup this way. Nothing extra, nothing fancy. I'm not doing no contour or anything today. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna do this. My lashes, and my eyebrows. I need to go for a touch up because they're microbladed. So yeah, don't come for me for my makeup skills because I don't have much of it. <laughs> so yeah, um, so that's why I started a business, how I started a business, how it's going. Right now, I've changed a few things from when I started to now. I don't use Alibaba at all. This will be a different video though, because I want to show you how you can use AliExpress without, use, without using Alibaba and using those big shipping prices. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but I'm going to do a video on it of Alibaba versus AliExpress and using that to get your samples and try to test out fabrics and all that. So, yeah. I hope you learned something from all my rambling in this video.
I hope you learned a lot, actually. If you have any questions, you know where to hit me up. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, comment down below if you think I'm doing a good job. Keep keep sending those questions in my DM. Um, yeah, and I'm going to continue to work and try to figure out things. So, yeah. I love you guys for always trying to help out a girl come up with video ideas. Yeah, it's just a relationship that we have and it's a relationship that you see in me which I absolutely respect. So, I'm gonna finish getting ready and I'll show you the end look if you really care to see. And um, you guys know I like to play dress up. So, I hope this video helped and answered a question as to why I started my business, why I left my nursing. I really didn't leave nursing. I still have my nursing license and I will never give that up. So, I'm gonna figure out a way to make it, to continue that journey with my kids as long as I can. And um, so I can stay home with my kids and work from home with my kids. So it's just easier for me that way. 12 hours doesn't cut it for me right now. The, the COVID and nursing is not working me. I'm not telling you to give up your dreams. And you wanted to be a nurse for a long time. You wanted to be a, whatever you want to be. Don't just give it up and just jump into what how I did it. It worked out for me in the end, but I'm still a hustler. I'm always going to be a hustler. That's one thing I can't give up. I don't. Eventually, I'll learn a technique where... I can settle with a certain amount of income and be okay with that, but it's just not me. I would never give up my the hustle, the drive that I have. I have a big drive when it comes on to hustling, and it's just me. Yes, I'm in my bathroom getting ready. Yes. Um, so yeah, don't just jump into it. Know your audience. Know your business plan. Work on your business plan. It's so hard, but there's resources out there that can help you. There's a lot of um marketing creators on Instagram that can help you. You gotta just spend some money to get some money. Straight up. So, be blessed. Thank you for watching. Love Shan, always. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like my videos. Um <laughs>